Once upon a time, there was a domestically produced Chinese fighter jet that was lightweight, small, and agile enough to take off on the road. It was developed around the concept of aerial guerrilla warfare. The J-12, developed by China in the 1970s, is the world's only lightest supersonic fighter and one of the first fighters to be developed but not yet in service. What is the untold story behind the birth of the J-12? The birth of the J-12 has a lot to do with the changes in the air combat concepts of the world's major countries. The idea of developing a flexible and maneuverable fighter was gradually formed. The earliest development plan was proposed in April 1968, and its name was even more direct and clear. It was called Little J. As the name suggests, it did not need to be a big aircraft and did not need to fly too fast, but it had to be small so that it could achieve high maneuverability. In addition, China's national strength at that time was limited, the overall performance of the aircraft, but also to reflect the principle of simple, simple, cheap and so on. At that time, the concept of combat is a people's war. The air is also a small fight big guerrilla warfare. Like the United States and the Soviet Union, such a large country with strong financial resources, aircraft manufacturing and high volume maintenance are not a problem. The country has a strong industrial manufacturing strength to back up. China is not the same at that time. The industrial base is still very weak. So the development of warplanes to be able to adapt to such an environment. Simply put, even if a future aircraft lands in a crop field, it should be able to be repaired on the spot. With the above in mind, three months later, the task of developing a new aircraft was handed over to the Nanchang Aircraft Factory. The technicians started designing the program that month and by August all the programs had been approved by the higher authorities. At the end of August that year, Nanchang Aircraft Factory officially received the manufacturing task. By March 1969, the name of Little J was formally determined as J-12. The chief designer of J-12 was Lu Xiaoping, who designed the previous Jiang-5 fighter. Cheap and simple maintenance were the general principles and the design of the aircraft was not too complicated in the early stage. From the second half of 1968 to 1969, a series of key steps were completed, from design to testing. By the end of 1969, the prototype was not only completed, but also successfully made its maiden flight. A brand new aircraft was built in China in just over a year, and from design to manufacture, it was all done in-house. The aircraft as a whole is really small, with a length of just over 10.6 meters, a wingspan of just over 7.1 meters and a height of 3.7 meters. The takeoff weight of the aircraft was estimated to be around 4 tons, but after manufacturing, it weighed 5.29 tons, and the empty weight was only 3.1 tons. Overall, it was a small and compact aircraft, because, whether it is the United States, or the Soviet Union, at that time, the idea of designing aircraft, are towards the direction of the big and technically full advancement. The aircraft they designed were overall heavy and big, and the fully equipped technology was also getting more and more complicated. On the contrary, the J-12 was completely opposite to the aircraft design ideas at that time. So, how is the performance of the compact J-12? In flight, the climb rate of J-12 can reach 180 meters per second. At that time, the F-14, which was under development in the United States, had a climb rate of 200 meters per second. Another F-5E model, which was specially designed by the U.S. to deal with the MiG-21, was designed to have a climb rate of 160 meters per second. On the most valued circling radius, the J-12 has a minimum circling radius of 1,140 meters at an altitude of 5,000 meters. Another fighter, the J-6, it has this parameter of 1,200 meters. The F-5E, which is being developed by the United States, has a minimum circling radius of 1,080 meters at 5,000 meters. In order to make the aircraft's circling radius as small as possible, the United States installed a leading and trailing edge flap system on the wings of the aircraft. In terms of acceleration, the horizontal acceleration of the J-12 at 5,000 meters takes 65 seconds. The J-6, takes 85 seconds. Another American fighter, F-5A, takes 140 seconds. Combining the above parameters, J-12 is more flexible than the same type of domestic fighter aircraft. Compared with the newly developed aircraft of the United States, it is not different in all the performances. Looking at its taxiing distance, 
It takes only 500 meters to take off and the aircraft can leave the ground. When landing, its taxiing distance is only 510 meters. The ultra-short taxiing distance allows the J-12 to take off on various ground surfaces, which is also in line with the actual infrastructure situation in China at that time. In contrast, the J-5's takeoff taxiing distance needs 590 meters, and its landing taxiing distance reaches 825 meters. Therefore, in terms of the flexibility of ground, takeoff and landing, the J-12 is one step ahead. Another major feature of J-12 is that it is very light in weight, with a fully loaded takeoff weight of not more than 5.3 tons, and a normal takeoff weight of only about 4.4 tons. The engine of the aircraft is only a turbojet 6B jet engine. The overall light weight and large thrust, which makes the aircraft overall performance flexible, and also became the world's lightest supersonic fighter. In the fuselage material, the Nanchang Aircraft Factory at that time, used a lot of new technology and new materials. Carbon composites, titanium alloys and aluminium alloys, which were new at that time, were used in a large number of aircraft. Many of the new composite materials are lightweight, which reduces the overall weight of the aircraft to a large extent. Although the J-12 has many advantages, its shortcomings are also very obvious. Especially in those years, China was in an extremely closed environment design and manufacturing and foreign similar types of aircraft, compared to some of its performance shortcomings are more obvious. Firstly, let's look at the firepower of the J-12. There are two conventional cannons on the fuselage. One is 30 mm, which can fire 80 shells. The other is 23 mm, which can fire 120 shells. In addition to the guns, the J-12 can also fire air-to-air -air missiles, and can mount two infrared-guided missiles. If you look at the weight of the J-12 itself alone, the firepower it is equipped with is already not weak. However, compared with similar foreign models, its firepower is still not enough. The important reason for this is related to the flight distance and thrust of the aircraft. The overall fuel storage capacity of the aircraft is 1,250 kilograms, in addition to carrying two 400 lighter secondary fuel tanks, these fuels together, making the aircraft's maximum range of 1,385 kilometers. Therefore, the J-12 is a typical short-range aircraft. In addition, the thrust of the aircraft engine is not high enough in comparison. A British expert in the field of aircraft engine has seen J-12 in the Air Force Aviation Museum, and this expert pointed out in a burst of blood, if it was replaced with turbofan engine, its fuel consumption could not only be reduced by half, but also its range could be doubled. Obviously, during the development of J-12, China's closed environment, there is no access to more advanced engine technology. What's more critical is that the general principle of J-12's research and development is compactness. If the design of a larger fuel tank or change the weight of the engine, it will conflict with the principle of compactness and flexibility. So in general, to be lightweight but also want to fly farther and want to carry more firepower, the technology in that era is simply not solvable. Throughout the 1970s, the J-12 was under constant development for improvement. By 1977, 36 J-12s were built and 135 test flights were made. Judging from the situation at that time, after the J-12 met the requirements of the series, the thinking of the Chinese Air Force equipment was adjusted again, which is why it was not mass-produced and equipped with troops later. However, we should also see that China completed the R and D in a closed situation with complete autonomy. So from any point of view, China's engine and fire control system at that time cannot be compared with the West. There is a view that if the J-12 is replaced with a better fire control, an early warning system, it can still play a great role in the new era because of its flexibility and cheaper maintenance. There is even a view that future aircraft operations will have a huge mothership like an aircraft carrier with smaller aircraft docking and operating through the mothership. If this is really the case, then the J-12's lightweight and flexible characteristics may be valued again in the future.